nice smoke. Actually, I'm in the potting shed here at home before I go to work. It's kind of like a greenhouse. some uh, Balkan blend from a fellow YouTuber, John. Thank you very much. Nice, nice, dark and light. Very smooth. You know, non-aromatics smoking guys probably think, I mean aromatic smoking guys, that's what I'm thinking, those who smoke uh, flavored tobacco probably think, oh, those non-aromatics are too strong for me, yeah, I, I wouldn't like that, but I'll tell you what, these Balkan blends are just like mellow, and yet, full of flavor, unlike the aromatics to me. Teach their own. Oh, I'll smoke an aromatic occasionally. If I'm sitting around the campfire with other people or, you know, something like that in a crowd, inevitably you get the comments, oh, I remember my grandpa smoked a pipe and I always loved it. I hate cigarettes, but I, I sure do like pipe smoke. So. <laughs> So there's smoking for yourself, then there's smoking for the crowd. Hmm. Kind of caramel, nutty, but smooth. It's smooth. Hmm. Yeah, nice. It's very nice. Kind of like uh, my standby Peter Stockby uh, Balkan Supreme, but like a little down a notch, kind of. It's very nice. In a jum, of course. Just kind of in a jum kind of mood. I just got back from a week working a wildland fire over by Wenatchee, between Wenatchee and Ellensburg. Took a couple pipes. Didn't smoke once. And there were guys smoking out there, but it just... Not pipes, cigarettes. But it just... Didn't feel right. I mean, here we are in a wildland fire. 80,000 acres and, and people are smoking cigarettes in the unburned, you know. Maybe not. It just didn't feel right. And once I got back, back to fire camp, it was like late at night. And just a lot to do. Got to get a shower, got to eat, got to, you know, clean up, got to do paperwork. So, this time I didn't smoke. I didn't really see a smoking area either. We're, we were fire camped at uh, a school, both in Wenatchee and in Kittitas. And, uh, of course, there's no smoking on school grounds. So, that applies to us, too. So, you got to smoke out in the street. And, actually, if there had been a little... Uh, wad of smokers out there, I think I would have joined them, but I never did see that, so. Yeah, that's real nice. Um, so I, ha I haven't smoked for a week, and then I didn't smoke for almost a week before that. <laughs> If it wasn't for smoking here with you guys, I probably wouldn't hardly smoke at all. <laughs> but, uh, especially during the summer, I don't know. 
winter it's kind of nice, you know, you got your little fire right there in your hand, and there's nothing real. So, I was just thinking, you know, why do you, why do you go on these wildland fires? You know, there is risk. You kind of put yourself in some danger. <laughs> Most of the danger is driving to and from the fire in a 55,000 pound truck with all the other crazy folks on the highways. But, uh. You know, it's an adventure. It is. How often do we really have adventures in our lives? You know, where we kind of set ourselves up to have everything under control and real smooth. Uh, get that house in the burbs, get your bark to lounger, and off you go. Your job that you're golden handcuffed to, even though you hate it, you know. I, I decided early on that wasn't going to be my route. So these fires are a way of having an adventure. I mean, fire camp, that is, I imagine, about the closest thing in existence to a 1900-era logging camp. And there's, there's just this great sense of camaraderie there where... Everybody's sharing kind of a similar experience, and uh, a lot of the hierarchical uh, boundaries that separate people, uh, financial, educational, vocational, you know, all those things that create tiers, levels of hierarchy that you don't often leap down or leap up, a lot of that is gone at a fire camp. So, you know, there are hand crews, there's overhead, which is management, there's uh, people digging in the dirt who are PhDs, you know. I mean, it's just like, it's a, it's a real hodgepodge of people. They're contractors who are like, uh, kind of scary in that, you know, it's like, expect Da, 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 banjos playing in the background but they are just awesome and real people and it is it is fantastical it is great so there's that aspect of it there's the idea of kind of helping out in your community there is also when you get back here back home you appreciate what you've got, you know, you appreciate the comforts that you've created and the the sense of regularity that a, a regular job provides, you know, you just kind of get into that groove and you're on it and it kind of runs by itself. And you just take that for granted, you don't realize that normally. So, um... doing these things, having these adventures is a way to appreciate what you already have. Because honestly, most of us fly on autopilot most of the time. We are not big on self-awareness. <laughs> so, kicking yourself out of your routine um, or whatever reason, a camping trip, uh, you know, doing a little world travel, um, working a wildland fire, uh, you know, it, it just removes you from your everyday routine, and that is very useful. So, it's a good thing. <laughs>
I don't do it for the money. I, in fact, I lose money when I go on these things. They, they don't pay very well. <laughs> of course, if I got all my certifications and played the game, which I'm not really willing to do. I have my little niche, and, and I like to think I do it well, and that's good enough for me. I don't need to be ever rising in the management. is good stuff. I'll uh, list it out in the written description for this. Sorry about the poor quality there. I, I <laughs> uh, Normally I keep uh, my little dinky point-and-shoot camera with me. It survived India. It survived Sri Lanka. In my pocket. Well, I was wearing a t-shirt that didn't have a pocket on the way back. And so I put it in my my uh, Nomex pants pocket. And we stopped at a restaurant on the way home. Had a patty melt and some fries and a milkshake and uh, got back in, came back home. Oh, camera's gone. So I called the restaurant. Sure enough, it was there. So this weekend I'll motorcycle over there and pick it up. That's my one camera that does pseudo HD 720 video. This one is like way sub HD. Sorry about that. Great camera other way. A Sigma DP1. But uh, it's not known for its video. So anyway, nice relaxing smoke here. Mr. Jum, ah, oh, thank you. I wish we could find out more about this BP Jum. It's like, I just haven't been able to find much information about that. So, maybe someday. Or maybe never. Maybe it's lost information. Very rusticated, handmade Obviously, machine-made blanks, I think. Who knows what kind of process they use. But anyway, it just sets right with me. Got to get to work here. Enjoy your summer days. <laughs>